Let's stand to our feet and worship the Lord. Amen.
Listen to Nisha. Come on. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, keeping your angels encamped around us as we drove to your house, as we walked to your house, as we caught the bus to your house. However we got here, God, you protected us to get here. We thank you for providing the provision for us, God. Thank you for keeping us this last past week, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your healing virtue. We thank you, hallelujah, for raising up those that were sick, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify you because you are the healing God. You are the worthy Lamb of hosts. You are the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we honor you on today. Father, we, Father, we pray for those that are on their way that you keep them protect them as they come into your house that they make it here safe father we thank you for our visitors on today those that's in the house and those that's on media we glorify you today lord heal someone today deliver someone today restore someone today in the name of jesus continue to have your way in our lives receive our praise and our worship on today we honor and we love you in jesus name amen I'm so happy to see Elder Ross. Oh my God, it does my heart good to see him. I thank God for him, oh my goodness. And he can have his place on the pulpit if he wants to. <laughs> amen, amen. We're gonna be reading from <clears throat> Psalm 67, starting at verse one down to verse number seven. Psalm 67. Be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy ways may be known upon earth, thy saving help among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people <clears throat> praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth, Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. And that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to give God glory like nobody here but me and God. Amen. Don't worry about the empty seat. Just you and God. Praise God like you want to. Amen.
praise belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And we want our praises to go up to him as a sweet-smelling Savior this morning. Amen. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord let the glory of the We want the Lord to be glorified and magnified in all that we say and do. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this place today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let your Shekinah glory fill the temple, Lord God. Hallelujah. A sweet-smelling savor of praise and worship unto your holy name, Lord God. Receive our sacrifice, Lord God, today. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Amen. Uh -huh. 
of the saints rise in the house of the Lord today. Amen. At this time, we will have uh, Minister Marilyn Alexander give convention updates. Amen. have the commercial ready, Michael? Okay, amen. We're going to run the commercial first. Amen. Shield of Faith Fellowship of Churches International is proud to present our 2024 annual convention. This year's convention is titled Moving Forward in Faith. It will be held June 5th through June 7th at Luminate Church, located at 250 East San Bernardino Road in Covina, California. Wednesday, June 5th will be hosted by Bishop Fred Matthews from Triumph Church. Thursday, June 6th will be hosted by Bishop Ron Thomas from Reconciliation Apostolic Ministries. On Friday, June 7th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., there will be an international women's service hosted by Pastor Daphne Cowan from Love and Grace Christian Fellowship. Friday night service will be hosted by Reciting Pray Leader Seal of Faith Fellowship of Churches International, Apostle Henry B. Alexander. Night services will begin at 7 p.m. and feature music from the International 100 Voice Choir under the direction of Minister Myla Knox. 
Daily seminars will start Wednesday at 10 a.m. and will include topics like preparing to pastor and the emotional health of the believer. There will also be classes for children and teens. Special guests will include Bishop Marty Alexander, Bishop William Hudson, Pastor Lionel Peters, and Pastor Shannon Flakes. There will be a special late concert on Thursday night immediately following the night service. To register, go to shieldfellowship.org or scan the QR code. This convention you don't want to miss. Register through now. now. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for that wonderful Amen. Shield of Faith Fellowship of Churches video presentation. Amen. Uh, we're still registering. $20. That is all it is, $20. You, register, please register. You don't want to miss this. Amen. Highlighting on Friday, amen. Uh, Bishop Marty, amen, is sponsoring a women's service, amen, for the women and the men are invited. That's on Friday at 1 o'clock p.m., Amen. Move forward together in faith. Amen. And the guest speaker will be Pastor Cowens, Daphne, Daphne Cowens. Amen. So yesterday we had a leadership meeting, leadership training meeting, and Bishop Johnson was over that from Pastor Shield of Faith, Pasadena. The information, go on YouTube and uh, also on Shield of Faith Pasadena, to listen to it. It's excellent information, excellent information that'll help you be effective in, in ministry and just being a saint, just being a, 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 a responsible, accountable child of God. Amen? It'll bless you. It really will bless you. And it'll help you, actually, especially to be a leader, if you're a leader, you want to be a leader, you want to be effective and responsible, go back and listen to that. That was our five-star training on yesterday, and it is available online. Go to YouTube, Shield of Faith Pasadena. Amen. Amen. Uh, the women's ministry, all of the seminars, they're already set. Um, seminars on dealing with difficult people. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Strategies to strengthen your church. What we believe. If you believe the Lord has called you to pastor, there are seminars dedicated to preparing to pastor. Amen. Ministerial training of all kinds. Pointing our children and youth to Jesus. We got a lot of babies in this church. And they all need to be pointed to Jesus. Amen. As often as possible. Amen. Uh, also, supporting your pastor and maintaining unity in the church. Excellent seminars. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's June 5th, 6th, and 7th. Block it out on your calendar. Make preparations if you are able to, to be there for the morning seminars. Amen. They go, the seminars run from 9 o'clock all the way to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And there's a lunch break in there also. And then we come back at 7 o'clock p.m. every night, amen, to hear from our dynamic speakers. Amen. Apostle Henry. Amen. Apostle Henry Bishop Fred Matthews from Nashville, Tennessee, Dr. Ronald Thomas. These are all men of God that are, are anointed and sent by God to minister to his people. So please block your schedule. Please register, amen, to come and be a part of this wonderful, wonderful convention. God bless you, amen, amen, amen. We're going to turn the service over to Bishop Arling. Let's give the Lord a hand praise as he's coming, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. I thank God that he found me lost in my sin, and he 
called me to himself. And I'll never forget the day that he brought me out. I want to add a little something uh, that we've been over before, and I, I want us to take these. Now, we have a church that seats 1,500 people. And there's still room for more. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to ask you to don't leave here today without taking some of these. And you invite a person, you get their name and their phone number, and then they have three choices, whether they're going to come on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or, or all of the above. And you check that off, and then we'll give them a call from the the headquarters office, they'll, they'll get a call from the headquarters office reminding them that they were going to be there. Amen. All right. So now, this is a great way to bring some people. Right. Amen. I've heard down through the years, lately, kind of, well, people don't want to be saved. Yes, people want to be saved. People need someone to point them yes. towards the right way. The right way. Yes. And so I'm going to ask you to not leave today without taking some of these and getting these uh, uh, appointments. We'll, we'll, we'll call it an appointment. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will be glorified. Amen. Well, now. The cat's out of the bag. Amen. My wife asked me, said, are you preaching tomorrow? And I kind of, you know, wouldn't say to her. She said, I know you. I know when you're not preaching. <laughs> and I told her, stay out of my business. <laughs> She's up in the office looking through my stuff. And she said, I know you're not preaching. Who's preaching tomorrow? Yeah. And I said, I'm sworn to secrecy. Yeah. Amen. The secret has been revealed. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. We're delighted. We're delighted to have in our presence again. Elder Kevin Ross. Come on, somebody. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not going to try to give his testimony. He's going to preach his testimony. And we're going to hear from him musically as well. Sorry about that. Get you next week. <laughs> All right, now, where, where do we have our stool? Oh, all right, yes. I want to ask you all to stand. Yes. And we're going to give God the glory. Yes. He's up and walking, y'all. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's walking, and I'll say, he's walking, and he's in his right mind. Come on, somebody. And so we're going to yield to him at this time. Elder Ross, say whatever. Yeah. Elder Ross, say whatever the Lord has you to say. And we'll receive it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Talking about a testimony. Yes. Talking about a testimony. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're now in your hands. Let's receive him with a hearty praise the Lord. Praise All right. All right. Michael.
upon me like oil. Pour me like oil. Take my life, O oh Lord, pour me like oil. Like a healing balm of rain. On a world in so, so much pain, please take my life, oh Lord, pour me like oil, please take my life, oh Lord, pour me like oil. So confused, Lord, won't you use us to heal your people? Oh, yeah, we give ourselves to be used by you. Pour me like oil. Take my life. Pour me like oil. Like a healing balm. On the world, the world. So much pain.
Like a healing balm of rain on a world in so, so much pain. Please take my life, O oh Lord. Pour me like oil. Please take my life. Oh Lord, pour me like oil. Ha! He's able. He's able. God is able. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a provider. He's able. He's able to take our lives and pour us like oil. As I was sitting in my seat, the Lord, this morning, the Lord spoke to my heart. He says, I'm a miracle worker. He says, I'm a miracle worker. He says, and I take delight in working miracles for my people. See, the doctor said you weren't supposed to live through that. I have friends in the medical field said you weren't supposed to survive that. The devil said you're going to die. And my body was in so much pain, I thought I was going to die. On two occasions, I said, Lord, is it time for me to die? And in a booming voice, he spoke to my spirit and said, no, get back out there and fight. Get back out there and fight. And Jesus, Jesus, I said, Jesus brought me out. He said, and live and not die. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's able. He's able. He's able to deliver you out of whatever you need. Hey, I am excited to be back in the house of God. I said, Lord, you know I want to be there so bad. I wouldn't even watch it because it would make me feel worse because I wasn't in the house. But I'm glad to be in the house. And the word that the Lord put on my spirit was inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. See, we've got questions, and we feel like we've got to know. We need to know what happened. And as I thought about it, it's interesting because men and women do that differently. 
Sisters, they want all the details. What was she wearing? How was her hair fixed? What did she look like? Let's get some coffee and sit down and we're going to talk about this. And me and we like, something blew up. Nobody got killed. That's all right. Let's watch the game. We process these things differently. But the truth is life is full of questions. And see, either we are thirsty for knowledge or we just plain nosy. And I don't know which is necessarily the truth, but sometimes, Dick, and I'm just plain nosy. Not my business, not my problem, but I just want to know what happened. And see, life is full of questions. Some, and many of our questions deserve an answer. And some of our questions don't deserve to be dignified with an answer. But we have questions and we just want to know. See, I have found out if you will ask the right questions, you can get the right answers. And so if you would jump into the middle of my recent situation, the logical question would be, what did Ross do? And see, if you ask that question, I wouldn't be hurt. I wouldn't be offended. I wouldn't be upset. It's only sensible to ask the question why. And I will admit in the middle of my situation, I asked myself, Lord, what did I do? And see, I know I'm not perfect, but this I don't understand. See, it reminds me when we jump into the middle of the story of Job. What did Job do to lose his oxes, his ass, his sheep? his camel, and all his sons and daughters. Job lost everything but his wife. And she was kind of sketchy. She told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Now, I don't know why she said that, and I'm going to leave that alone. I mentioned that to my wife, and she said, boy, you better shut up. You know, you sisters, y'all be sticking together. But what did Job do to lose? See, many times I have discovered that the answers to the questions that we have aren't in the middle of the situation, but you have to go back to the beginning. You look at the war that's going on now in the Middle East, and you might say, I just don't understand it. God made a promise to Abraham. He says, I'm going to bless you with a seed. I'm going to bless you with an heir. I'm going to bless you with a son. And 14 years later, nothing happens. See, sometimes God makes us a promise and he doesn't move fast enough fast enough for us. He said, Lord, you said you were going to do something, but it's been two weeks and ain't nothing happened yet. And so 14 years later, Sarah comes to Abraham. Actually, his name was Abram and Sarai. And God had not changed her name, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to say that. So Sarah comes to Abraham and says, Look, I have a plan. What I want you to do is to go into my young, beautiful, black, Ethiopian handmaiden and get with her, and she will raise up a seed for us. And Avery said, babe, you know I don't want to go into that young, 
beautiful black Ethiopian woman, but he says, I'm going to take one for the team. <laughs> and that's what he did. He went into her and she conceived. And then on down the line, God blessed Abraham and Sarah with the son that he promised. And he came with, he blessed him with a son, and he said, call his name Isaac. And now we have Isaac and Ishmael. And so the struggle begins for the birthright. And to this day, the war that they're fighting right now is still that same struggle for the birthright that God promised to, to Isaac, but Ishmael feels like he has a right to the birthright. See, some things we do can set off a ripple that will last for a long time, if not throughout eternity. Turn in your Bibles to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 6, Job chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So it says, there came a day when... The sons of God, so we're talking about the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. All of us are going to have to give an account to God for what we've done. We're going to have to present ourselves before the Lord and give an account for what we do. It says, and Satan the accusers of the brethren came also among them. See, remember that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He don't like you, and I don't like him. I don't like his mama. I don't like none of his friends. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. You need to understand that God is omnipresent. In other words, he can be everywhere at the same time. But Satan, he's not omnipresent. He runs to and fro and sends his demons and his imps to get the information and bring back to him. But we serve an awesome God who's able to be every place at the same time and do whatever needs to be done. And so the Lord said unto Satan, here it is, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. He's a perfect man. He's an upright man, one who fears God and eschews evil. It said, and then answered, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear thee for naught? In other words, he fears you, but he has a reason to be faithful to you. Thou hast made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all he has on every side. Thou hast blessed the works of his hands and the substance of his increase in the land. He says, but if you will put your hand on him and touch him, and break down his kingdom and take what he has, he will curse you to your face. See, Satan is trying to imply that we have a shallow relationship with God. 
and that you and I, we only serve God for what he gives us. Have you ever encountered some people that are takers? They only want what they can get from you. Get what you got. When I was in kindergarten, I was on the playground one day, and the prettiest girl in the kindergarten, she walked up to me and says, will you be my boyfriend? And I thought about it, and I said, sure, why not? And every day we would walk home from school and stop by the drugstore, and we would buy penny candy. Now, most of y'all don't know about penny candy because penny candy now probably cost about 30 cents. But we would buy penny candy, and they had imitation plastic rings on a stick. And one day she looked at me and batted her eyes and said, will you buy me a ring? And I went in my pocket and got out my quarter, slapped it on the desk and said, give the girl what she wants. So she put on the ring and we walked home eating penny candy and she was looking at her ring. And two or three days later, she had her groupies because she always had a group of girls around her, and they were laughing and talking and carrying on. And I thought, I'm going to walk over here and see what they are talking about Why are they laughing. Bishop, I walked over there. She had a cigar box full of imitation plastic rings. I took that box from her. I got my ring. I put it in my pocket, and I went and sat under a tree. And I lament it. And I believe to this day, she's whipping game on somebody, but that's all right. She was a taker. She was a taker. Yeah, that's what I said, Sister Tay. Wow, come on now. But the devil tries to imply that we're takers, that we only give God for his hand of blessing, that we don't really love him. But the truth is, we love God. We thank him for the blessings, but we love God. So Job's situation really started and happened when God said, have you considered my servant Job? Said he is perfect. He's a mature man in his faith. He's lived for me for a long time. He's rock solid. Said he's upright. He's striving to live holy every day. Is anybody in this room striving to live holy every day? See, sometimes it's not easy, but I made up my mind that I'm going to live holy, holy every day. It said that he fears God. He has a reverence for God. Job understood that God was the creator and sustainer of everything, and he held Job's life in his hands. And then it said, and he hates Evil. Do you hate evil? See, you may not do evil, but do you hate evil? See, some of us, we used to see people doing evil, and we thought it looks like they're having so much fun. It looks like they're having such a good time. I wish I could do what they are doing and still be saved. But the Bible said Job hated evil because he understood that evil was an offense to God. Do you hate evil? Some things we see on TV, 
we look at it and we say, wow, it looks like. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The byproduct of sin is death. I remember when I was out and in between life and death and Satan brought a woman to me and I had taken lodge at her house because we were going to do a great work for the kingdom. And she came in the extra room that she had given me to rest. And she says, in the morning, you're going to have sex with me or I'm going to kill you. And in the morning, I told her, I said, you got a husband right there next to you. And he said, if you don't have sex with my wife, we are going to kill you. And I said, then that means you're going to have to kill me because I will not sin against God and I will not sin against my wife. And so I said, whatever you have to do, if you're going to kill me, you're going to kill me, but I'm not going to do this thing. See, God will help you to make up your mind. And somehow I got out. I don't even remember. But see, many times we experience challenges and difficulties, not because we've done evil. Now, sometimes we have done some things that put us in a bad situation, but there are many times when we go through evil, and it's simply for the glory of God. Amen. In the ninth chapter of John, the people approached Jesus about a blind man. And it says, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents? And he said, neither have sinned, but this is for the glory of God. Yes. See, I look at some things that Sister Bobby has gone through, and I have come to the conclusion that it is simply for the glory of God. Yes. See, Jesus said, I I'm going to heal this blind man for the glory of God to manifest my glory in the earth. And he picks out some of us to, to go through tests and trials simply for the glory of God to manifest his glory, to manifest his power, to manifest his deliverance. We are the light of the world. We are that city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are living epistles known and read of men daily. Men and women are watching how you live your life. You say you saved. When somebody comes by and steps on your brand new shoes or your brand new white tennis shoes, do you cuss them out? When somebody hurts your feelings and lies on you, do you give them the hands of Sister Marilyn? I had to give up on giving the hands. God said, okay, you can't do that no more. Don't even think about it. See, the question, questions, questions. Has God mentioned your name to Satan? Has God said, have you considered my servant brother blank or sister blank and fill in the blank with your name? Has God said, have have you considered my servant? Question. Can God trust you to do what's right 
under pressure. See, it's okay, it's easy to do right when everything is going okay. But you, when you're under pressure and people are looking at you and, and everybody's trying to figure out what are you going to do, you went to the family reunion and they were twerking and dropping it like it's hot. And they came down to you and said, is she going to drop it like it's hot? Or are you going to live... Lift up your hands and live for Jesus. Question, will you honor God when the tears are rolling down your face? See, Job was in trouble. He lost everything. He was in pain. And if I'm not mistaken, said the dogs were licking his sores. And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Ha! Will you bless the Lord when your body is filled with pain? I remember when I was in the hospital and I didn't know where I was. And I didn't know what was going on. I was in pain that I can't even describe to you. I had cold sores in my mouth a half an inch thick on the top and the bottom and it filled my nose. I couldn't eat. All I could do was sip a little water through a straw. I was in pain that was so unbearable. But I remember laying there one day and said, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I want you to know I love you. If you take my life, I still love you. This pain is unbelievable, but I still love you. See, you've got to make up your mind that I'm going to love God regardless to what I go through because I know the saints were praying. I laughed. I said, devil, you in trouble because I know the battles are praying and the Alexanders are praying and the Ross are praying and you're going to bring me out of this thing. Hallelujah. Huh. I said, Lord, I, I still love you. Hallelujah. Question. Can God feed you the meat of the word, the hard stuff? Or does he still have to feed you baby food? Because after all, it's all about me. I want to have it my way. I want to be seen. I want to be heard. I want to do what I want to do, still living and sleeping in the baby bed wearing a diaper. God says, can I feed you the meat of the word, the hard stuff? See, a few weeks ago, the enemy tried to steal my life. He tried to kill me. But God said, live ha, and not die. He says, I want you to declare the world that greater is he ha, that's in you ha, than he that's in the world. I want you to declare that I'm more than a conqueror yes, yes, yes. through him that loved you. Hallelujah. I want you to declare that they overcome by the blood of the lamb Hallelujah. and the word of their testimony. He says, son, rejoice because your God is great. He said, rejoice because your God is mighty. He said, rejoice because your God is a deliverer. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God will deliver them out of them all. Not just a few things. He says, but I will deliver you out of them all. See, I'm a miracle. I'm a walking miracle. He delivered me out of them all. I was in pain and out of my mind, and I, don't, I didn't know what was going on, but my daughter told me about this. She says, my, my wife and 
Some of my daughters came in the room where the doctors were. I don't know how many of my daughters, if not all of them, some of them came in. And they began to sing. Ay, 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 Shabbat. Said they began to sing. And they began to worship. And I know if my wife was in, she began to pray in tongues. They didn't worry about the doctors. They didn't worry about the nurses. But they began to sing. And my daughter said, one of the nurses said, look, all his vital signs are going up and up and up. My God is a deliverer. My God is a healer. If you will worship him in the middle of the test, in the middle of the trial, he'll bring you out all right. And they said, the vitals are going up. See, we were born to win. The Bible said, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and give God praise. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hey, yeah, 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 Shabbat. Yeah, 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 Shabba. When it looks like there's no way out, he says, I'll make a way out of no way. When you don't know what to do, he says, I'll give you wisdom and show you what to do. He says, when the enemy rushes in like a flood, I'll raise up a standard against it. When God says live, you can't die. I wanted to die. I was tired of the pain, but God said, live and get back out there and fight. Fight the enemy. I'm not through with you yet. And I'm going to end on this. When I was in the hospital somewhere between life and death, God spoke to my heart. And he simply said, a life for life. And then he said it again, a life for life. And then he says, I have given you back your life. You owe me your life. And Shield of Faith Long Beach, God is saying that to all of us. Today, a life for life. I have given you eternal life. I have given you all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And because I have given you life, you owe me your life. See, we owe our life to God. If we will unreservedly give our life back to God, if we will live for him, if we will serve him, and if we will work for him. See, the Lord said, tell the people I've got something for everybody in the kingdom to do. He's called you to do something for the kingdom of God. And if you will do what God told you to do, if you will give your life back to him, God says, I will bless you and I will answer the questions of your life. Yes, inquiring minds want to know. We have questions. But the truth is, Jesus is the answer to every question. 
And everyone who can, I'm going to ask you to come to the altar for a time of consecration and rededication. A time for us to tell the Lord, a life for a life. I give you back my life. I consecrate myself. I will examine myself. If you will do that, and watch God will bless your life in a new and fresh way. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, oh. I give myself away so you can use me. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself away. Oh, oh. I give myself away. So you. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. So you can use me. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you, I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself away. I give myself away. Give myself. I give myself away. Oh, 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 oh. I give myself away. So and I want to make an invitation. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, today can be your day. If you will give yourself to Jesus. And so if you want to be baptized and you want to receive the Holy Ghost, just touch one of the ministers and they will see to it that you get what you want. Say this. Say, God, a life for a life. Say it again. Say, a God, a life for a life. And I give my life back to you. And while Brother Daryl is playing, I just want you to begin to talk to God. And Sister Terry, will you come up and pray about a life for a life? Pray for us, pray for our children, that they will give their life back to Jesus. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, hallelujah. We just humbly come before you today, Lord, thanking you for your goodness, for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Lord God, that you would give your life for us. Hallelujah. And all you require is a life for a life. Father, we lift up all those that are here today, all those that are listening, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch each and every heart. Touch our minds, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give us a desire, Lord God, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord. Hallelujah. To want to give our lives to you, Lord, to serve you, Lord God, to work for you. Hallelujah. In the vineyard, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we submit ourselves to you today, Lord God completely holy father hallelujah in the name of jesus lord god all oh, bless lord god hallelujah strength and heal the people lord god hallelujah heal our minds our hearts our souls and our spirits father god that we might hallelujah completely give ourselves to you lord god in the name of jesus lord god we ask that you just bless each and every one that is here today under the hearing of your word we thank you lord god for your word hallelujah it does not go out void lord god but it will do what you send it out to do and we thank you right now lord god hallelujah that you have fed us today we feasted on your word lord god we thank you lord god for the testimony hallelujah 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 of your word hallelujah that your word is true lord god we thank you for raising up elder ross lord god hallelujah hallelujah lord we know that the effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much lord god hallelujah and lord we thank you lord god that every prayer we send up lord god not only do you hear it lord god oh but lord you you answer it lord god and we thank you that we're waiting Hallelujah for your response, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Not taking things into our own hands, Lord God. Oh, but Father, we're waiting on you, Lord God. Show us where to go. Give us what you want us to do, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You, you may return to your seats. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. God is so good. Uh, his goodness is more than we can express. I thank the Lord for victory. I said, I thank the Lord for victory. The devil tried to take one of God's soldiers. But he lost. He was defeated. Anybody know what we're celebrating on tomorrow? Memorial Day. All right. I think we ought to have a celebration before Memorial Day. Come on, somebody. This testimony calls for a celebration. Come on, somebody. Y'all, let us stand to our feet. Those who are, who are able to, stand to your feet, and we're going to sing. Victory is mine. The devil thought he had him, but he's, he can say, I've got the victory. Victory belongs to me. God gave me victory. Oh, I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Today is mine. 
song says victory is mine because I told Satan get behind me Satan come on we can call the devil out the devil's on your track he's trying to take you out you say I rebuke you in the name of Jesus get behind me Satan hallelujah thank God I've got the victory over the enemy I've got the victory over the enemy, and it's mine, Lord, mine, all mine. Oh, I've got the victory over the enemy, and it's mine, Lord, mine, all mine. Oh, I've got the victory over the enemy, and it's mine. declared my victory. The devil can't take my victory because I got it from the one who is able to give me victory continually. I've declared I got the victory. Now, somebody say, how did you get over? That testimony was a strong, strong testimony. Strong. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. See, some people have a testimony. <laughs> but we have a testimony. He knows how he got over. Jesus brought me out. All right. Oh, Jesus brought me out. All right. Jesus brought me out all right. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Jesus brought me out all right. Oh, Jesus brought me out all right. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 don't, I don't sit down thinking 
Oh, well, yeah, you know, he, he got, went to the hospital and got out. No. God deserves a greater praise than that. God deserves a greater praise than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I don't know if, if you I don't know if you've been to death's door or not. And you don't want to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for determination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. The name of the Lord is a mighty time. His name shall be praised. I know that his name. Yes, his name. The name of the Lord is a mighty time. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. The name of the Lord is a mighty time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all too tired to praise him. All right, y'all go home and get some sleep. Hope maybe you'll get more energy. I, I'm feeling this. I am feeling this. Elder Ross didn't have to be sitting here today. He could have been laying here, right here. But God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
shall be praised his name shall be praised the name of the lord is a mighty tower his name shall be i know that his name shall be praised his name shall be praised the name of the lord is a mighty tower his name shall be yes his name shall be praised his name shall be praised the name of the Lord is a mighty tower. His name shall be praised. Yes, his name shall be praised. His name 
Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. I'll look, I'll look to the, the hills. I'll look to the hills. From what cometh my help. My help. My help. Your help. Your help. My help. Cometh from the Lord. Who made the heaven and the earth. Come on, somebody. We can depend on yes. God. Hallelujah. I'm he glad for the celebration, somebody. the pre-memorial celebration. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. A memorial celebration is honoring the dead. I honor, I honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The true, the true and the living God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us prepare to receive the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Ross, we're more than glad. We're more than glad, more than glad for what the Lord did in your life. I came to see you several times. And you didn't know I was there. But the Lord brought you out. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. God is great and greatly to be praised. I, 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 I'm just going to quit. I could go on and on and on. But, but my voice is kind of getting away from me. Amen, amen. Yes. Thank him for his mercy towards us. That means he didn't have to do it. Come on, somebody. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. All right, let us stand with our offering. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Scripture said, cast your bread upon the waters. And it will return. Henceforth. The Lord promises. The Lord has promised and his word is true. God promised if you cast your bread on the water, it's going to return to you. He's saying to you, you can't give more to me than I can give to you. He said, I'm going to make sure it comes back to you. I, I like that. I like that kind of promise. Elder Ross, it's not like your little girlfriend <laughs> you got your ring back, but you but she but she got your pride. <laughs> but God has promised. You can't beat God giving. People say, well, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. And some people say, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Amen. It, it, it cannot happen. All right, let's raise our offering to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father and our Savior, we thank you, O oh God, for who you are. Thank you for your tender mercy and for your loving kindness. Thank you, O oh God, that you called us unto yourself. We thank you that we came into your house on this morning. Thank you because you met us here, O oh God. You gave us a, a desire, strengthened our will to do that that you called our hands to do. And we thank you. And we come to your house bringing our tithes and our offering so that there may be food in, your, in the pantry. 
Lord, we ask you to bless each one. Oh, God, pour the blessings out from heaven. We thank you and praise you, oh, God, because you've promised and we're standing on your promise. And we thank you for the opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This offering, Lord Father. Bless every needs of this offering, Lord. Me, every needs of this church, Lord Father. God. Bless the giver. May, may, bless the, the giver that may give next time, Lord Father. God. We just thank you for this offering, Lord God. We give you all the praise, Lord Father. All the honor, Lord Father. God. We love you. Bless this season of this house, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now I'm going to invite you. We have programs. Amen. This is the program for the Amen. convention. And I want everybody to come get one of these. And while you're getting one of these, I want you to get some of these. Amen. All right? Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. Excuse, excuse me. I didn't mean to wake y'all up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I love you all. We love you too, love Bishop. You. Amen. We love you Thank you. We Thank love you, you Bishop. Yeah, they, they love me back here. Yeah, <laughs> all right. All right. Without further ado, let's prepare to, to do our, our closing. Amen. Where's my other singer? She gone. <laughs> Come on, Rashad. You know I depend on you, girl.
Father, in the name, Father, Lord in the name, willing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and we thank you, O oh God, for that that has taken place in your house. We thank you for those who attended, Lord God. We ask you to go with us from this place. Let your angels continue to encamp around about us and give us safety in our travels. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.